Good morning, everybody. Um, I believe tomorrow you're having uh, a day on vocation, and that means calling, of course. And when we say that to people, they tend to think about, oh, that's just for priests and nuns and all those people, you know, nothing to do with me, so I don't need to bother, really. I can just, you know, switch off. All these priests coming in here telling us how wonderful it is and nuns wanting us to be nuns and you think, oh dear, I can't do that stuff at all. Well, you couldn't be more wrong, actually. Um, some of you are preparing with me to be confirmed and um, I'd like to thank you for what you did over Holy Week because it was very, very beautiful, particularly at the Easter Vigil. Um, it was very, very beautiful. And our confirmation programme this year has been based on a beautiful prayer of St. John Henry Newman. Um, God has chosen me to do him some definite service. He has committed some work to me that he has given to no other. I have my mission. I have my mission. That's the name of the programme for confirmation this year. And that's what vocation is. I have my mission. I am called. You are called. All of us are. A person is called to live a life of service in marriage, in the priesthood, in religious life, or as a single person. But because we're baptised, we're all called. That's it. Um, and so vocation as such is for everybody. It's not just for priests and religious, it's for all of us. And so what we've been doing in the programme of confirmation this year is trying to help our young people to discover exactly what their mission is, what your mission is. Sometimes when you are young, one of the problems that you experience is that old adults like me say oh well you'll be all right when you get out of this and get a bit of sense um, and it's really quite patronizing to treat a young person like that because if you look at the bible you'll see many young people were chosen by god to do his work uh, the most obvious example is a young woman called mary but there was king david there was many many others and of course the prophet jeremiah I am a child. Do not say to me, I am a child, he said. Go now to those to whom I send you. Everybody has a mission. Everybody. And as Cardinal Newman goes on, beautifully, if I am in sickness, my sickness may serve him. If I am in perplexity, my perplexity may serve him. He does nothing in vain. He knows what he is about. It's hard to say to someone who is dying from cancer that their sickness may serve the Lord. And in fact, I would never do that. But at the same time, they often come to see it in that way themselves. You know, maybe my time of service is not finished. Maybe there is something that I have yet to give. Maybe there is some way in which I can reflect the Lord's love through my suffering and patience. And that is definitely true. Um, lately, I have spent many, many hours with people who are dying. It's been a tough, tough time. Some of them are your relatives. Some of them are not as old as they might be. And it's an amazing thing when you sit with them, how they come to accept what is going to happen to them. Um, it's quite amazing really that they, they seem to see a situation that is totally negative and they find something in it. This is my way of serving the Lord now. Or when they are elderly and their mind begins to go that there they can still serve the Lord. And so vocation is about recognizing what is Jesus asking of me? What is Jesus asking of me? You may never know that. 
in my own case, I remember thinking about being a priest is a long, long time ago now, of course. Different times now, but I thought it was a fairly sensible thing to do when I was a young man. I liked taking part in mass at church and doing things with other people and thought maybe this was a good thing. But the thing that actually did it in the end, I'd been in college for two and a half years and it was the first time I went to Leward. And we went in an omnibus and um, including Bishop Patrick McKinney, no less. And we went to work with a group of people with special needs from Birmingham, who were an incredible group of people. And we, we were there, and I saw things I had never seen before. I saw families with two children with serious disabilities. And I noticed their cheerfulness in the midst of very trying situations both the children themselves and also their parents. And I recognise that these people have got nobody, nobody to support them spiritually. They were sort of marginalised. It was as if they didn't exist. And so one afternoon that week in 1972, when I was standing in the, you know, the square in Lua during the, blessed sacrament procession with these people all around me whom I had taken to very quickly the prayers were read out and the prayer of St Martha is read out Lord the one whom you love is sick the one whom you love has a disabling condition and I can say that something happened to me at that moment that made me feel I am going to give away my life for these people. And I could see it very clearly, very clearly. And that moment has led me, first of all, into the priesthood, but also into my life's work, which is with SPAND, of course, trying to enable people with learning difficulties and disabling conditions to transcend themselves and to contribute not to be helped, not to be pitied, but to live, to live and to contribute. And so that's what happened to me. And I also find, if you don't mind me saying so, that I say there's been a lot of times recently when I've been sitting with people who are dying and I don't feel uncomfortable and I don't feel that I don't belong. Uh, I feel that I do belong there and some of those people who are nearing the end of their lives are very beautiful people and they'll take your hand and kiss your hand or they'll give you a hug and it makes you feel about so big you know. So that's my situation but the most important thing today and tomorrow that you recognise is I have my mission. Those words of Cardinal Newman apply to every single person who's baptised into Christ. I have my mission. God has chosen me to do him a service that he has given to no other. Maybe tomorrow you might take a little time in the midst of all the activities that are taking place to ask yourself so what's he want me to be? Who does he want me to be? What does he want me to do? And don't be surprised if one day soon you actually find out.